Hi, welcome to this example on hypothesis testing for the mean from a Poisson distribution. Now in this example, what I want to show you is what we call a two-tailed test. So, let's read you the example here. We've got a machine produces glass sheets and the number of bubbles seen per square meter in the glass sheet follows a Poisson distribution with mean 3. Find the lower and upper critical values for a nominal 10% significance level test for the mean not equal to 3 and the actual significance level of the test. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is to define a random variable. So what I'm going to have is let x be the random variable, number of bubbles per square meter where x is distributed as a Poisson distribution with mean lambda. So, we've got a null hypothesis. If we assume that the bubbles are always produced at a mean rate of 3 per square meter, then we would have the null hypothesis H0 or HO, that is that the mean lambda is 3. And because we need to find the lower and upper critical values, we've got what we call a two-tailed test. More on that in a moment. But it means that lambda we're testing is not equal to 3. So when you have not equal to, that means you've got a two-tailed test. And if we assume then that HO is true, so I'll just write that in, then the number of bubbles is distributed as a Poisson distribution with the mean 3. So what does this mean? Well, essentially, if we drew a number line here, okay, then the number of bubbles we expect is going to be 3, generally. But we know that this can vary just in the normal run of things. We might get two bubbles, four bubbles, who knows, okay? So there's going to be a scattering of the number of bubbles seen. And that scattering is just going to be reasonably normal. But when you get to a certain value down here, which we're going to call the lower critical value, and I'll label it XL. You can label it anything you like, but uh, I've just called it that. And then we have an upper value here, which I'm going to call XU as the upper critical value. And there comes a point when the probability of being less than or equal to this value is going to be very small. It's going to be unlikely to happen. Or the same applies here. The probability of being more than or equal to this upper critical value becomes unlikely. And we're going to set these probabilities in the tails. This is the lower tail. This is the upper tail. And what we do is we split the nominal significance level in this example of 10% in half. And we consider a probability or proportion of 5% in the lower tail and 5% in the upper tail. I'll explain this through this clause. What we're going to do then is we're going to reject the null hypothesis if the probability, assuming that x follows this distribution, okay, if the probability of getting less than or equal to this lower critical value turns out to be less than or equal to half of this significance level, this nominal significance level. So that's going to be 5% for this example. And 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05. And we're also going to reject HO if the probability that x is greater than or equal to the upper critical value also is less than or equal to 0 0.05, 5%. Right? So we need to find these value through these clauses. Okay, well we can start off by finding the lower critical value. And to do that, we can look up in a set of cumulative Poisson probability tables. And I have an extract 
over here. And you'll find any of these tables generally in the back of a statistics textbook or you might have a set of statistical tables. So we have the mean of 3 and our observed values x and in this column we have the probabilities of being less than or equal to any observed value x. Okay so we want to find this lower critical value where the probability of being less than or equal to it is less than or equal to 0.05. Well looking at the set of tables we can see that when x is 1 this value is greater than 0.05 but the first value that is less than 0.05 is going to be this one here when x is 0. So we can see that from tables the lower critical value is going to be 0. Now for the upper critical value x with a little u there what we need to work out is the probability that x is greater than this upper limit being less than or equal to 0.05. Well to work out the probability of x being greater than or equal to an upper critical value we do this from the tables by doing 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to a particular value and that value will be 1 less than what this value is so that would be u minus 1. All right? And so I know that this quantity has to be less than or equal to 0.05. So we can write that in here as 1 minus the probability x being less than or equal to the upper critical value minus 1 has got to be less than or equal to 0.05. And if I rearrange this and make this the subject, then what we get is that the probability of x being less than or equal to that upper critical value minus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 0.95. So from tables we can look across to the right here and we can see that we're looking for a value here let's just write it down which is greater than or equal to 0.95. Well, you can see over here that from 6 onwards, and the tables would stretch down to 10, 11, and so on, from 6 onwards, these values are greater than 0.95. So, what we're looking for is the smallest value that we can get that is greater than 0.95, and that happens to be this observed value 6 here with that probability 0.9665. So we can say that this then is 6. So what that means is if I have 1 to both sides that the upper critical value is going to be 7. So we've got our lowest critical value which is 0 and our upper critical value which is 7. So it turns out that this value here is actually 0 which is really at the end of the number line I could rub that part out if you like and so that value there is 0 and this one up here is 7. Now in the last part of the question we've got to work out the actual significance level of the test so we'll just write down what that is the actual significance level we'll just abbreviate that to sig level now, the actual significance level is not the nominal significance level of 10%. What it is, is the probabilities of being less than or equal to your lower critical value plus the probability of being greater than or equal to your upper critical value. So in other words, for this example, it's the probability that x is less than or equal to 0. Admittedly, I could write just equal 0 there because there's nothing else less than it plus the probability of x being greater than or equal to the upper critical value of 7. So what is this? Well, less than or equal to 0 is 0 0.0498 and the probability of being greater than or equal to 7 is 1 minus the probability of being less than or equal to 6 which is this value here, 0 0.9665. 
And if I work that out, then I get 0.0833. And as a percentage to, say, one decimal place, this is 8.3% to 1 dp. So you can see that's slightly less than the nominal 10% level. So this is the actual significance level. OK, so hopefully you've been able to follow that and can model any other examples that are similar to this on this one.